Well, one of the hot topics at this year's meeting, and indeed for a number of years, has been endocrine disruptors. And I'm delighted now to be joined by Heiko Schoenfuss, who's going to have a chat with us about them. Heiko, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us, first of all, for anyone that doesn't know, what we're talking about when we talk about endocrine disruptors? Sure. Endocrine disruptors are really a, a subclass of pollutants in the environment that have a very particular form of action. They interact with the endocrine system, hence the name, and can very subtly change uh, the mode of an organism's normal functioning. And can you give us some examples of the types of substances that we're yes. talking about? A lot of those are things that can mimic a hormone. Uh, so for example, the estrogen hormones that drive a lot of reproductive behaviors. We have found over the last 20 or so years that there are a number of compounds in the environment that actually will mimic a naturally occurring estrogen and so an organism will not be able to distinguish between the naturally occurring estrogen produced by the organism and compounds in the environment that mimic them and one of the results can be for example that male fish develop female reproductive organs so a form of intersex that has been quite a bit covered in the media. And are there any other effects that we're seeing on wildlife or is that sort of the main effect? It's probably the one that has been most publicized over the years, but there's certainly other effects as well. We have some pesticides that may feminize uh, female fish and make them more masculine, um, or we have chemicals that feminize male fish and make them more female. Um, so there's a whole range of compounds, and one of the things we really grapple with is the total universe of endocrine disrupting chemicals and trying to distinguish between an endocrine disrupting effect and just a general pollutant effect on an organism. So where are we with that understanding? Well we're getting closer. Uh, we have had 20 years to try to understand what endocrine disruptors do and how do we distinguish between an endocrine disrupting effect on an organism, again usually mediated through the steroid systems, the endocrine system of the body, and those effect that are really just stressors from environmental pollutions. But we are now at a point where the regulatory agencies are really trying to firm up that understanding and create mechanisms to distinguish between those two forms of pollutant stress. So what do you think are the solutions to, to this? One of the advantages of dealing with endocrine disrupting compounds, many of them are produced and used in households. So we can personally take responsibility and so education has been a big part of trying to deal with the problem. If you reduce the use of certain compounds, you may be able to reduce the adverse effect in the environment. In other cases, it might be green chemistry, replacing compounds, or just finding better ways to uh, develop industrial solutions to minimize compound use. And do you think this is a problem that's being taken seriously enough at the moment? I believe so. There has been a lot of interest in endocrine disruption work, uh, both in the public and in the scientific community. I think it exceeds CTAC as a, as a venue. We are probably one of the leading organizations to deal with endocrine disruption, but there's a lot of public interest in it and there's regulatory interest, which is very important as well. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Heiko. Really fascinating to hear about it. Thank you. And uh, enjoy the rest of the meeting. Thank you. CTAC TV is brought to you from the CTAC North America 40th Annual Meeting. Make sure that you watch all the fantastic interviews and reports that we've been gathering here at the annual meeting on our YouTube channel.